Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. And this is going to be episode number 10 of the tutorial series on how to build an electric guitar. And this is the guy we're working on in this series right here. As you can see, it's really starting to take shape. It's looking like a guitar. Doesn't that look great? Isn't that, isn't that a cool looking neck? Um, anyway, in this video, we're going to continue the work on the neck that we've uh, been working on. And we're going to cut in the truss rod and we're going to do our cool little headstock uh, cover right here and do the little uh, logo inlay, the E-War logo inlay in it too. Anyway, so uh, I hope you dig it. Stick around and check it out. And if you like it, how about you give me a like and subscribe. Anyway, let's get rolling with the video. So uh, this neck is coming out really nice. We've got it uh, shaped up and ready to go. And, and one of the things I've been talking about doing on this uh, uh, neck is doing a headstock uh, overlay, which is going to be this guy right here. And uh, something I've always wanted to do, and I've never been able to do it, is, is engrave my inlay into the headstock. And I want to do it like right in this area here. And I'd like to do it with like mother of pearl or something like that. And, and you know, I went out and bought me some tiny carbon chisels and everything. And just frankly, I don't have the patience to do it. So uh, over the last couple of years, I've been really thinking hard about it. And I decided, you know, I'm going to go ahead and purchase a CNC machine that's going to allow me to do these little headstock inlays. And uh, so that's what we're about to do. I'm not, I, 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 I didn't get it that long ago. I've used it a few times, but I'm no expert or anything on it. So uh, this is going to be a little experiment. I'll show you. I've got, I did a test run. I did a test run, and that's it right there. And I think it looks pretty cool. So it would basically lay on the headstock, I guess, like that. So it'll come out like that. And I'm going to put it right in this area right here. So it's kind of right in between all of the uh, tuner posts and all that stuff. So anyway, so I'm going to get this guy. It's ready to go. I've got it thickness down to 1 point, uh, 0 0.172 inches thick. And I've got it stuck on a piece of MDF just as a holder. And I laid everything out. And I laid out the uh, tuners and the, uh, the truss rod opening and everything. And I think I got a good place for the, uh, for the little logo. And so I'm going to go ahead and stick this down to my CNC and see if we can't run this. And then I'm going to mix up a little epoxy. And I got some Pearl X dust. Uh, pigment. It's a, a, a powdered pigment. I'm going to mix it in with the epoxy and put it in there. Hopefully I have a cool looking pearly looking uh, inlay when it's all said and done. Anyway, I'm going to get set up over there and we're going to get rolling with this right now and eh, we'll see how it goes. I've got a second one of these just in case that one goes bad. We'll do something else with that. So that uh, CNC machine has been kind of a cool thing to learn how to use. Uh, I've had it for a few months now and I've tinkered. I've, I've done a couple different things on it and uh, probably more practicing on it than anything. And But it's a very cool tool, very uh, a big learning curve with it too. I'll tell you, it is a tool you have to learn how to use. It's just like, uh, just like a router or a bandsaw or a table saw for that matter. It's something you've got to, you've got to learn how it works and, and how to do it. And it's, it's been a really good experience. It really has been. Of course, I'm starting on this easier stuff, but I did buy a big enough one that I could cut out a guitar body on it, too. And if I could figure out how to do 3D modeling, I could be able to uh, contour the tops of guitar, too. But that's somewhere in the future. So as you can see, I laid it out on the wrong side of the, uh, the, wrong, the wrong side of my drawing of the headstock. But luckily, it was equidistant off of the center, so it worked both ways. And that wasn't a particular grain pattern I was after. So I'm just mixing up a little bit of epoxy here. Of course, you have to mix quite a bit. I use about an eighth of a teaspoon for the actual logo, but uh, you have to mix up a certain amount with this particular type of epoxy, so I mixed up a bunch. And uh, the last guitar I made, I did quite a bit of epoxy work on it. So if you'd like to see that, I'll go ahead and stick the uh, stick a little link up in the top here for my last guitar I built, which I used all these tools and did quite a bit of epoxy work on it. It was pretty cool. That's a vacuum pot you see in the back there. Uh, epoxy, when you mix it, it tends to get like a million little bubbles in it. And that vacuum chamber draws the bubbles out, so when you pour it, it pours nice and clear. See that I used just what was stuck to the, the popsicle stick there, and that was it. The rest of it just hardened up in the cup. 
Okay, so the next step in the process is we are gonna cut this here dual action truss rod into this neck right here. Now this is a dual action, I think it's called the hot rod uh, truss rod, it's a dual action, I get it from Stu Mac. They're really nice, they work. Uh, <clears throat> dual action means you can turn the Allen key counter or clockwise and it's gonna bow the thing up and you can turn it counterclockwise and it'll bow the thing back down. That way to straighten out your neck no matter what's going on with it. Uh, anyway, I've got, uh, so the tools I'm gonna use for this, I got this, my jig here I use for routing these in. I've got my router and I have a quarter inch uh, down spiral router bit in it. I've got my nut, because I'm gonna use my nut to measure where to put this thing. And, uh, and I've, got my little, I've got my little square, my measuring square right here. So anyway, I'm gonna set this camera up pointing down at this jig and we're gonna go through this process and I'm gonna show you how I lay it out and, uh, and set it up in the jig and cut it out. Anyway, let's get rolling with that right now. Okay, so uh, this is that dual action truss rod I was just talking about. Um, I like it, it's got a, like a plastic coating on the outside that keeps, uh, keeps all the steel bits inside uh, covered up. And uh, so what I do is I measure this thing first and the width, is one quarter inch, as you can see right there. And the, the majority of the height of this thing is 1130 seconds, okay? So I've already set my router, I set the depth stop on my router to 1130 seconds of an inch, which is gonna give me the overall depth. But if you look very closely at the end here, it steps two different times in depth, and it also gets wider two different times uh, in width. So I'm gonna route the whole thing all the way through. And then I may change out, I have a 3 8 bullnose bit. I may route the very end with 3 8 because that's 3 8 right here. And then I'll probably just chisel this little spot right here. Because you want this thing fitting fairly snug. And you want it tight up against the end of the cut on this end, down here. And I like cutting this end. This is gonna be flush with the inside of my nut right here. Just like so. And my Allen key is long enough to reach, reach in the hole, and it will reach to that. So I like, I don't know, for whatever, I have cut them all the way through before. I've cut the notch all the way through before. But I've gotten to where I really like cutting short of the nut. So the nut has solid wood all the way across. In other words, we don't, the nut's not spanning a gap in the middle. So that's what I'm going to do. So the first thing I have to do, and this thing is rocking and rolling a little bit. I may get a little block of wood to hold that up because it's, basically teetering on this one little point right here. So uh, let me grab a block of wood. Because when you try to measure this stuff accurately, you don't, wanna, you don't want this stuff dancing all around on you. So what I'm gonna do, now I've already taken this nut, and anybody that's bought these nut blanks knows that they are not absolutely perfectly flat and straight and everything. So I've, I've already taken it on my little sanding block I have with some 320 grit paper, and I flatten out both sides so we're exactly 3 16 of an inch thick all the way through. So I'm going to lay this nut up here, and as accurately as I possibly can, I'm going to put it right on the flat, right on the edge of that break angle where it goes down. And then I'm going to take and mark this side right there. Let me look to make sure I did good. Yep, that looks really good. Okay, so that is one end of my truss rod. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over and lay it upside down because this is flat and it'll lay nice for me. So I'm gonna lay this right here, right down the center, and I'm gonna mark this other side right here. Okay, so there's my start and my stop right here. And what I'll do when I router, because the router bit's round, obviously, it's going to cut a round hole. I'll cut it to where the hole just touches that line, and I'll take my, I got a little quarter inch chisel. I'll take my chisel and I'll square up the two ends. Okay? So, okay. Now, um, so this jig basically just has a bed down here in the middle that the neck will sit on. I've got these adjustment bolts, I've got these threaded inserts going in here that'll accept the machine thread on a bolt, and I could tighten them up with this 9 16 wrench. So, I take my little, uh, my measuring square right here, which is a really super accurate, uh, nice little tool to have. Another one of those good tools to have for a guitar making. 
Now I normally measure in, in standard measurements, but for this I like to use metric because it's just so much easier to read. So anyhow, I got some oil on my I got some oil on my deal here. Okay. So let me check. Right here I have 5.4 centimeters to the edge of the center stripe. And I have 5.4 centimeters to the edge of the center stripe. So this guy, I'm just going to hand tighten this for now. And by the way, this thing is laying down flat on that guy. Let me check this again. Dead on 5.4. Dead on 5.4. Okay, so that center line is centered right there. This guy here, we want the same measurement here because that thing should be straight. And if you notice, I measure each time right above the bolts because you don't want to measure this side here and then this side up here somewhere. You want to keep that in line at the same spot so you're sure you're measuring the same spot equally each time. And we're good. 5.4, 5.4, 5.4. And 5.4. That's nice. Okay, so that's really good. So now I take my router right here. Okay, I'm able to see down in my router to see those lines. And I'm basically good. Now, let me point out something here too. Now, this jig, if you make these things too tight, the router's going to get hung up and not move. So you can see that this teeters back and forth. There may be a 64th of an inch of uh, clearance there. But what the idea is, you keep equal pressure, you turn on it equally uh, going sideways like so, and you keep that consistent, and it's basically touching on this corner and on that corner, and that keeps it running true right down the middle, and it gives you a little bit of room so you can gauge how tight it is by just how hard you turn it. So I put a little wax on it, and it rolls really nice there too, okay? So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to hook up my little vacuum system here. And uh, we're going to start routing away, and I'm going to go just a little bit at a time. I'm going to check very shallow first, make sure it all looks good going down, and then I'll start taking out maybe an eighth of an inch of depth at a time. So that is what we're going to do. So uh, I know it seems like I, I took a lot of time talking about this jig and everything, but it really goes pretty quick. You get a jig like that, uh, you could drop that neck in there, turn those bolts a couple times, center it up, and you're routing away. And it just comes out just dead on every time. And the cool thing about that particular jig is with these tilted headstocks, when I go to tilt, uh, when I go to route the uh, access hole for the uh, for the wrench, it fits in that same jig, so you're not moving anything. Everything still stays set up, and you just route away with that. So I route it, and I check it a couple times, make sure the depth is good. I chisel my ends, and uh, and you know, and when I get up here at the other end where it changes width and depth, uh, of course I use the three eighths bull nose bit to, to route that one bit on it. But uh, then I do some chisel work up there too to just make sure it fits all real clean and very tight too. Important to have these tight. Okay, so I've changed out router bits and I put my three eighths uh, bull nose bit in there. And we're going to do just this little section from here right to the end with that. And it's going to go just a tad deeper too. So that is what we're doing now. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is router our uh, access uh, point for our truss rod wrench. And so I'm going to cut it from here to here at 7 eighths of an inch. I think it's 7 eighths of an inch. Let me check. Yeah, that's 7 eighths of an inch which will hopefully, and I'm going to go the same depth as this, which was 3 eighths. This end of this thing was 3 eighths of an inch, and I'll go the same depth, which will still give me clearance off of the back, so I'm not going to punch through the thing. And I'm going to use the same 3 eighths uh, bullnose router bit that I just used uh, for the end of the truss rod up here. So that's what we're going to do. So yeah, that router now just lays on the headstock angle and uh, you do the, exactly the same procedure. Route it back and forth a couple times and it really works out well. Then of course you, you have to uh, extend the hole all the way through under the nut 
So I use a quarter inch drill bit and I just drill it all the way through and that just leaves enough room to get that Allen key in there. Of course it takes a little bit of chiseling too because you're working on angles and everything and it's hard to fit everything in there but once I got it all together, see how tight that truss rod fits? That's the way you want them. Nice and snug everywhere. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be, I want to fit this um, headstock uh, cover onto the actual headstock of the guitar and I want to get this angled just right and make sure it's fitted really well before I glue it on. And once it's glued on, I'll go ahead and cut it out the rest of it uh, on the bandsaw on the router. <clears throat> but to do that, I want to start by, I'm going to clamp my nut into place right here where it goes and I'm going to then uh, fit the headstock plate up to the edge of the nut. So to do that, first thing I want to do is I want to make sure these, these nut blanks you buy, they're not perfectly flat and square. And of course, I already flattened it on the two sides on that piece of sandpaper. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and square up this bottom edge because I want that perfectly straight. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with my uh, shooting board my block plane. So that, the way that nut fits against the neck of the guitar and fits in between the, both the headstock plate and the uh, uh, fretboard, I think is hugely important. You want that fit to be as square and tight and flush and firm as possible in there because I believe that nut making good contact with the neck of the guitar truly adds in the sustain of the guitar. I think it's critically important, I really do. The nut and the bridge, of course, are the only two contacts what the string has with the guitar. So the better they are, I think the better the sustain you're going to have. You can see I drilled a one inch hole there. I, I showed me marking it and then I, uh, then it's just all of a sudden appeared. So, but that hole, that's a one inch hole that uh, is the truss rod access point for the wrench. And I made a cool little deal on my uh, CNC machine that uh, that's the cover for it, which I'll hold in with magnets. I think it looks cool. I'll show you a picture in a second. See that thing just clamps right on there and once it glued up I took it over to my band saw my router and and cut it out to fit the headstock. And that is the end look of the thing. I think it turned out really cool. Including that little truss rod cover too. Those are the woods I used in the guitar. Well folks I guess we better cut it off right about there. Um, I really love doing this stuff. This is such a great hobby to have. I really, really enjoy doing every minute of it, really doing. I enjoy making these videos too. Anyway, I hope somebody got something out of it. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful week. So God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.